morning, guys. This morning we have a special speaker to talk to us about something that you know, we discuss in health class quite a bit. Um, it affects some of us as students. It affects some of us as teachers and staff members here. Um, so as Mrs. Boyshuk um, discusses this with you, please give her your undivided attention because as she's speaking, you're going to start realizing that some of your classmates, some of your teachers may be going through some of this. It's very important. Um, so without further ado, Mrs. Boyshuk. Thank you very much. Hi, guys. Um, so listen, I know it's early. I know it's Monday. Uh, most of us were probably up late watching the Super Bowl. Um, and this will probably make me sound super old, but I was your age once. I know you probably don't want to be here. You're probably thinking of all kinds of ways in your head that you're making fun of me right now or go going to make fun of me after. And that's fine. Um, you probably have no interest in listening to me talk, but I ask that you just give me a chance to tell my story um, because I think and I hope at least that you'll gain something from it. Um, so first, bear with me while I show you a few um, pictures. You might think some of them are kind of cool, and I promise I do have a purpose um, with sharing them aside from just humble bragging. So this picture, these are pictures of uh, me and Heinz Ward, me and Jamie Lynn Spears, me and um, Jonathan Jackson from Nashville, me and Ed Sheeran, the singer. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is me. Um, on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., speaking to members of Congress. These are all pictures from red carpet events and fitness competitions, my wedding, book signings, um, a picture with Sarah Shepard, who's the author and the creator of Pretty Little Liars, my headshot, my book review in the newspaper, a couple TV appearances, winning awards, um, so that's a lot of cool things. It's book signings, red carpet events, and my husband Mike appearing on NBC's American Ninja Warrior. There's cool things like the gazillion concerts I go to and my many travels, and these are the things that I show to the world. Now, let me show you the things that sometimes people don't see on social media or in magazine articles or even sometimes in my daily life. This is my reality. So, this is what you don't always see. Um, this is me getting some treatments at the hospital. I get biologic drugs that are similar to chemotherapy drugs, and I've actually gotten chemotherapy before. That's me in the midst of a terrible rheumatoid arthritis flare and a migraine. Uh, it's me getting some stem treatments and heart treatments, and me having to wear a mask because I'm immune suppressed. Um, next slide, please. Um, these are other pictures. This is something you might not all have seen today. This is my fashionable attire. I wear a knee brace and a foot cast. Um, not, again, not something you always would just see by looking at me. I've had multiple knee surgeries. I need a full knee replacement. I'm only in my early 30s. Um, I've needed one since I was 25, and my <coughs> foot is so damaged that it's beyond surgical repair at this point. Um, these are me having two different infusions. Um, the one on the left was a drug called Rituxan. It's um, actually a chemotherapy drug, but I used it for an autoimmune condition. The one on the right, this was just a couple of weeks ago, um, trying a different biologic infusion. Um, and these are some biopsies I've had. Surgeries, scars from surgeries, my foot swelling up like a balloon because of my RA. And the bottom right picture is um, a progression of a scar I have about this big on the back of my head. Um, for a condition called Chiari. I had uh, brain and neck surgery six months before my wedding, and uh, I had about a month to prepare for it. So that, that was a, a big surprise. Um, so I think that's, yeah. So um, here's my point to all of this, okay? Um, my point is that you never know what someone's dealing with privately. You don't know what people are struggling with in their home life or behind closed doors. We've all heard the anti-bullying messages, and at your age, you've probably heard your fair share of them and are probably kind of sick of them. <laughs> um, but the reason why we shouldn't judge or bully others is often just an afterthought. We hear about the fact that bullying is bad, and we're told that we should be kind, and then we're lectured about tolerance and inclusion, but we aren't always having it explained to us 
in a way that puts it in the context of an actual person and an actual human being being on the other side of it. Um, I really like at the end of uh, the Ellen show, Ellen DeGeneres always says, be kind to one another. I mean, I have to agree with her. It's honestly just that easy. Just be kind. One of my favorite quotes is, be kind because everyone you meet is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. And that's so true. This is my point here. Um, here are some pictures of me when I was around your age, give or take, maybe a little older. So it's me when I was younger playing softball and me doing cheerleading, going to school dances, my senior picture. Um, you know, when I was in middle school and high school, I had a fun group of friends and I was always doing something fun and social. I was super like obnoxiously <laughs> involved in extracurricular activities. I played sports, I dabbled in basketball um, in middle school, and then I was a cheerleader in ninth and 10th grade and a softball player from T-ball all the way up through age 16. Um, I even rallied my really small high school to start a fashion club and a dance team, neither of which really took out off, but I was always super active, or at least I pretended to be. Um, see, I was diagnosed with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease that's systemic. It affects your whole body, it can affect your joints, your skin, your heart, your lungs, um, other organs. Um, and most people didn't know that from about fifth grade, um, I was dealing with this and I still do to this day. Um, I had always put up a front in order to fit in, which so many of us do, even as adults. I was hiding excruciating and sometimes intolerable pain caused by this autoimmune inflammatory disease. Um, it's an illness that's extremely painful, and it's not contagious, but it is disabling, and it is incurable. You have it for your whole life. Um, it's an illness that, simply put, is just your body basically attacking itself. So I would sit with the popular girls, and I would wear the nice clothes that were actually stylish back then, believe it or not. <laughs> um, you know, but I just tried to keep up appearances, and I still do that. But my reality outside of the appearances was and is far different. Um, it was a lot of doctor's visits and needle jabs and pain. It was people making fun of the way I walked and mocking my limp, even people that I thought were my friends. It was sickness and being tired and fatigued all the time. I kept up my grades, but I racked up tardies or missed school because I was so sick and everybody wanted to talk about it and start rumors and gossip about why I wasn't in school. I didn't tell many people about my illnesses because honestly, no one understood. Arthritis is in the name of the disease and so people think it's an old lady disease and they assume that if you're young and you have it, you're faking it. So I kept it hidden and now at this point in my life, I've racked up several other diagnoses, literally dozens, not even exaggerating. So I find myself sometimes still putting up a front. Um, and even though I'm an adult, sometimes still being trolled or mocked or bullied. I'm personally lucky to have a good support system, but not everyone has that. I'm lucky that I found my gift for writing and turned my pain and my sickness into a career as an author and a patient advocate. I used writing and social media as ways to cope with very difficult and sometimes dangerous health problems. But again, not everyone is so lucky, and this is what I ask you guys to remember. So before you utter an unkind word to or about someone, take a moment to think about problems you're facing in your own life. And think about if you'd want others mocking you or making fun of you for them. Maybe you're lucky to not have problems now, but no matter who you are, I promise that you will at some point someday have problems, whether they're big problems or small ones. And what you'll want most in that time when you do face a problem or a struggle, is just simply kindness and compassion. Not mocking or locker room talk, not mean girl stuff or bullying, not gossip or inside jokes, not online harassment. You'll just want people to be nice. So my advice would be to just treat people as though they are dealing with something you don't know about and can't see, even if they're not. Just extend that kindness regardless, because maybe they're struggling silently. For example, you don't know why someone's missing school, or you don't know why they are bullying others. Maybe they're bullying other people because they're angry or hurt or frustrated or insecure, and they're taking it out on other people. Maybe like me, their silent struggle is an illness, 
It could be a physical il illness like mine are. It could be a mental or emotional illness. Maybe a person's parents are fighting all the time or on the verge of divorce. Maybe one of your fellow students doesn't know where his or her next meal will come from. There might be families in your community on food stamps or who get their meals from the food bank. Maybe someone's being abused at home. Maybe someone is struggling to find their identity or is depressed or is contemplating self-harm. And maybe someone simply just feels lonely or rejected or outcast, even if it seems like they have everything together. So be nice. Remember that not all illnesses and not all disabilities are visible, just like not all problems in life are visible. People have family problems and money problems and emotional problems that you might not know about or see on Instagram or Snapchat. And this brings me to my next point. We can all fall into the pattern of comparing ourselves to one another on social media. What you see people post on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter is not always their truth. Some people only post the best moments of their life and the best versions of themselves. So don't compete and compare your worst moments with the moments someone presents at school or online. Those are usually people's very best moments, filtered and edited. I need to take my own advice here because trust me, I do it too. I think we all compare and sometimes get caught in that comparison trap. And to be honest, it doesn't do anybody any good. And if you're struggling, reach out to someone. Sometimes you don't realize how good a friend someone actually is until you need them. Sometimes you don't realize how much you need a family member until they're gone. And sometimes you don't realize the value of kindness until you're well out of middle school and high school. But the earlier you learn it, the better, because being kind and authentic and being yourself will get you far in the world. It never goes out of style, and it's always a winning characteristic to have. People like people who are real and authentic and happy and kind, so be positive and spread those good vibes. There's so many ways to do it. I've got to say, I can't say enough about the arts. Um, this is one way to spread some good vibes and positivity. If you're going through any kind of difficult time, whether it's an illness or an injury, or a problem with a friend or a relative, or any kind of issues with self-doubt or self-image, then get creative. Um, maybe your creative outlet is sports, but maybe it's not. Um, I turned to creativity when I was younger. It was fashion design and writing. Um, now it's mostly just writing, but sometimes I paint or I dabble with my ukulele or I find new hobbies like astronomy. And I'm obsessed with animal welfare and my five pets, which I have a picture of them. They even have their own hashtag because they're awesome. I have three dogs and two cats, and um, they are in all different shapes and sizes. Um, but they honestly are the, the, uh, a godsend on my difficult days. Um, so yeah, animal welfare, aside from health advocacy and patient advocacy, is another cause that I devote my life to. Um, I love people. Um, I love helping people, and I love volunteering, being charitable and giving back. It doesn't even mean that you need money, but you can just donate your time to helping on uplifting other people. Because if you take the time to focus on loving others, um, it sometimes takes the focus off of your own problems and puts things into perspective. Writing my books has been a great creative outlet for me and a great way for me to cope with my health problems, which aren't always um, easy to deal with. If I'm being honest with you, um, the infusions that I showed you a couple weeks ago, I almost um, passed out during them. I had a dangerous uh, reaction and it was very scary. Um, I have had to deal with all kinds of tests and um, you know, some of them are humbling and humiliating and scary. Um, I have scars all over my body, but you know what? It, it is what it is. Um, what you see on the outside of people um, doesn't always match necessarily what's going on inside. And I personally always keep smiling but it doesn't mean that I'm not sick or sad or suffering or hurting. I'm strong, maybe not athlete strong, but strong. And uh, there are still many nights nonetheless that I cry myself to sleep because of the physical or emotional pain that comes along with a lifelong incurable illness. So my message is this, remember that people can smile through pain. Just because someone's smiling or presenting their best face to the world doesn't mean that they aren't struggling. So take the time to get to know your peers and just be nice. One of my biggest regrets um, is that there were people in high school who, in middle school, that I never really got the chance to know. And, and now as an adult, I wish I had, because I see that we probably had more in common than not. It's great to get outside of your bubble and get to know people 
who you don't usually talk to or don't usually hang out with who might have a different life perspective than you. Um, even as an adult, um, that's a great thing to do, and I try to do it all the time. So um, I know that that was a lot of rambling, and now uh, I know that people your age aren't really apt to always <laughs> wanting to ask questions, but I will open the floor up to questions or comments. You can ask me about my health issues or my books or really whatever else you'd like. Um, and if you want to find some of my work on social media, there it is. I'm uh, on all, like everything. I'm on everything. Um, you can just search my name or hashtag arthritis Ashley, hashtag sick idiot, which is the title of one of my books, which is a funny book about my health journey. Um, and my books are on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Walmart. And uh, my husband is actually a fifth grade teacher who your principal knows. <laughs> um, and uh, even though that's ironically not how I ended up here today. And uh, he has a really interesting journey as well. He's, he did American Ninja Warrior. And so uh, we share a lot of cool stuff on social media for him too. Um, so I'll open it up to questions. Um, I'm thankful that you guys listened to me talk today. And if anyone has anything they want to say, here's your chance. <laughs> yes. So I have three books. Um, one of them is fiction. So it's a fiction novel called To Exist, and it's a post-apocalyptic um, story with uh, a female lead character. She's actually the last woman left on Earth, and she, so she's kind of being hunted by all the men. Um, so that's a kind of dystopian, well, not even dystopian. It's a post-apocalyptic um, story. Um, that was my first fiction novel. My other two are nonfiction. One is a humorous health memoir, which I mentioned, called Sick Idiot. I know the title sounds ridiculous, but in the intro it explains why I chose that um, title. And um, really all that one is is a collection of the funny and ridiculous things that happen to you when you're sick. Um, like, for example, right now, there's literally a jug of pee in my car that I have to take um, to the hospital after this to be studied. I mean, it's like embarrassing stuff like that that happens all the time. And um, I've had some really funny stories um, that have come along with my, my health journey and then some really amazing and unbelievable things happen to you. And so Sick Idiot looks at that all from a funny perspective. And um, that's the kind of book that I've been told is humorous whether or not you deal with health problems. And my other book... Um, is also nonfiction. It's called Chronically Positive, and it's a collection of my most popular Arthritis Ashley blog posts, and it's all about um, the raw, real, kind of emotional side of life with illness, and it's like real um, kind of self-helpy, uplifting, but also um, really shows the reality of it, and that book is probably more suited to people that are going through um, some kind of struggle because it is more on the inspiring side. But thank you for asking. Um, it's been a great accomplishment to be able to use writing as a way to cope with my medical problems. <laughs> yes? Uh, no, so um, he was on last season, and he was a rookie. It was his first... Um, his first time doing it, and he made it to the Philadelphia qualifiers. And he was on TV, but it was uh, pretty brief. Um, they actually took the top 30 contenders from that city, and he was number 32, which wasn't bad um, for him being a rookie. And he, to be honest with you, he works at it. He's a teacher, but he works at a gym. And uh, that said, he didn't like devote his entire life to training for it like some of these people do. So for him being a rookie and not putting everything aside to train, it was pretty cool. So he's trying again this year, and we're hoping. We, we don't know yet. Probably won't know until April, but um, both of his audition videos are on YouTube, so if you want to check them out, it's um, Mike. his name is Mike Shock, S-H-U-C-K. And uh, uh, yeah, it was a really cool experience, and he was disappointed he didn't make it further, but I was super proud of him because I can barely walk half the time. So <laughs> those people really amazed me, and it's, it was an awesome experience. Thank you for asking. Yes? So um, I've been on a lot of Nash, or I'm sorry, a lot of local talk shows. So um, KDK um, has a morning show called um, Pittsburgh Today Live. Um, so I was interviewed on that. I was interviewed on a local show called Inspiring Lives with Dr. Shelley. Um, I've been on all the local news channels for various things. Um, so WPXI, KDK, um, WTAE. Um, I recently was on a show based out of Manhattan called Celebrity Catwalk. 
um, which airs on Manhattan Neighborhood Network and on YouTube. And uh, I was on the national TV show, um, Everyday Health, uh, which used to be on Saturday mornings on ABC. And I've also done a lot of um, podcasts and radio interviews. I used to be on air at KISS FM, actually, in Pittsburgh. Thanks. Thank you. I actually have a quick question. If I mean, it's completely up to you guys, and I don't even know what, if I'm allowed, but can I take a selfie with all of you from my social media? You can pretend to be excited that I'm here, even if you're not. Um, 